Good morning. It is the most glorious sunny day today here in the heart of the Lake District National Park. You can see some mountains around me. You can see that vibrant blue sky above and you can see my rucksack here. I'm packed and ready to go. Today we're going to be tackling Scarfell Pike, the highest mountain here in England. I have never done this route before. What? <laughs> I know, it's insane. But today I will change all of that. We're going to walk along this road through into Seathwaite, which is a tiny little hamlet. And then we're gonna follow the bridal way all the way up. We've got two tarns today, pass one on the way up, one on the way down. I'm gonna really take my time. I'm not gonna push, I'm here nice and early and just breathe and enjoy the space that is the Lake District National Park. So I'm really stoked to share this journey with you. I'm just gonna finalize getting ready and then we'll hit the trail. <laughs> If you've never done this walk before, but you're planning to, car parking, as in many of the Lake District, here is also very challenging. You wanna get here nice and early, try and find a space on the side of the road, make sure you're not blocking the road, A, for cars, but also emergency vehicles. And if there is no space, you'll have to find somewhere else to park, either further up the road or do the walk from a different direction. So I definitely encourage you to get here nice and early if you're bringing a vehicle. Seathwaite is the wettest inhabited place in England and receives around 140 inches of rain per year. It's not surprising then that it holds the record for the most amount of rain falling anywhere in the UK within 24 hours. There are two main peaks I'd like to just point out to you. This one up here is base brown and then we've got sour milk gill which is a waterfall kind of coming down there. Love the name. And then up here this is Glaramara, which is another very popular walking route to do from here. We saw the uh, footpath going off to the left, but we're gonna carry on along this bridal way. Nice and obvious, easy to follow. Wow, this whole waterway is dried up. Goes to show one of the wettest places in the lakes, and even here is a bit dry. Well considerably drier than normal. We were having a heat wave in the UK whilst I headed out on this walk, and Grains Gill, which ran down the valley on my right, was one of the only waterways that I saw that day that actually hadn't dried out. Walking south along the valley, I crossed over the Stockley Bridge, an ancient pack horse bridge built on the old route between Borrowdale and the Cumbrian coast. So we've just been winding our way up this sort of slabbed path to help prevent erosion and we're going to hit Taylor Gill Force which is a little waterfall, well a decent waterfall hopefully and then just keep on ascending. A little patch of woodlands coming up, loving the backdrop, we've left the main valley behind, left that river behind for now and we're just very steadily ascending, just take it nice and slow. It really is warm today, sweating buckets, and you can see how I'm pacing myself. Oh. Still though, I'm looking back and Skiddle's still in the cloud. I'm pretty confident it will burn off, but if Skiddle's in the cloud, I'm not sure how it'll work over here. Um, we've got some views sort of back over the valley. It's really good to be able to stop and look back. And just take in the view and we can see some bags up here where they're still working on erosion control. The Lake District National Park receives around 20 million visitors each year and the erosion and damage to footpaths due to heavy footfall is an ongoing worry. Rangers and volunteer teams work together throughout the year to repair and preserve the route, often using stone pitching to form solid footfalls.
I've just been wandering along looking at the map and I realised actually we must have passed the falls. I saw these, or this bit of water here, and I was like, oh, that can't be it. But it turns out the falls were actually literally in the forest bit. I thought I could hear it, but there's really not much water about, so it's not living up to its forceful name. That's all right though. We've got this little bit of water here. We're gonna cross over. So this, officially referencing the map, is Stiehead Gill now, that we're following all the way to Stiehead Tarn. Wow. Just rounded the corner, and guess what's coming to view? Whew. We're going up there, people. Crossing over this kind of bouldery landscape, and uh, actually, to be honest, it's kind of kind of in the riverbed here. You can see where the river's deposited all of these rocks when it's at full force, and now I'm just kind of wandering along it. And pretty soon I should cross over and then we're well on our way to the tarn. Wow, that is simply perfect. Goodness me. This landscape is quite big. <laughs> That's pretty much all I have to say. I'm just blown away at the immenseness of the mountains. Oh, there's that sheep. We can't stand it any longer. Stiehead Tarn is a picturesque spot and makes a great place to stop for a snack. If fishing's your thing, it's permissible to fish in the tarn, which contains wild brown trout. That was very refreshing, just sitting by the stillness of the time, enjoying the vastness of this landscape. I've had a banana, had some electrolyte drink, and now I'm pressing on. I've got a fair old trek now, onwards towards Scarfield Pike, and then the ascent to the top. You can pretty much see it, the way that we're going to be going, which is awesome. We're just going to take it nice and steady the whole time, and enjoy the journey. Okay, I'm really glad there's some backpackers over there because I've just realized rather than following this big bridal way, I want to go that way. I'm going to go that way and then cut across along. So I'm just trying to work it out. Yeah, that's what I need to do. So I need to cut parallel with the tarn and then join the main corridor route from there. Views down over the tarn are pretty epic. Good. Okay, I'm happy. I was just uh, really want to make sure I'm always aware of my pretty much exact location. And now I can see this here is the corridor route. This is very, well, I want to say obvious, but it's not that obvious. Band of path that goes all the way up, all the way up, all the way up, all the way up, and then it cuts up to Scarfell Pike. So it's going to be good. We've got some climbing. We're just going to enjoy this epic scenery around us and the peace and quiet when I actually stop talking. <laughs> See the other valley over there? Looking beautiful. I really am on my own now. There are a few other people on the bridal way back there, but they've decided to carry on along whatever route they're doing. And now there is no one within sight or sound in this whole vast landscape. Got it all to myself. Oh man, this is where I belong. This is my place. Absolute freedom to go wherever I want to go. And I'm completely self-reliant. My body is my engine and everything I need is on my back. This is where I really come alive. This is supposed to be Skew Gill, but again, 
it's run dry, no water in there from the top all the way down to the bottom and we got a bit of a rocky scramble just to get continue along the path at least the fact that it's jagged means it's really quite grippy so you can ascend quite quickly on this stuff turns out I'm not on my own I can see some backpackers up ahead didn't realise they came this way it's quite cool they're there though show that I'm actually on a path and not imagining it to feel like we're in the mountains now I know that seems like I'm stating the obvious but when you're kind of so obviously below them you don't really feel a part of them and you're just kind of separate in their world but the higher you climb and the closer you come to the peaks you start to feel tuned in with the landscape you feel that sort of sense of belonging as though you've spent long enough climbing you become one with the mountains my usual form, I've got a lightweight today. <laughs> yeah, you too guys. I was not expecting that. Just about managed one-handedly. Wouldn't exactly have said it was elegant. <laughs> However, onwards. Path gets even more precarious. Check this out. We're gonna get over this somehow easy just watch out for the polished rocks basically they're the slippy ones <laughs> don't look down <laughs> yeah. as i climb i'm finding it really hard to share what i'm experiencing i mean the landscape is just huge and from every step the angle changes and so the view changes i just absolutely adore this and trying to share that is really a struggle thankfully the gopro that i'm filming on is wide angle so you can see a little bit more but the only way to experience the air and the sound and the height is to actually be here and this for so many people can seem incredibly daunting or virtually near impossible but with the right training using map and compass training for your physical health and your mental health to build that resilience. I do believe anyone can do this. You just gotta want it bad enough. And oh boy, you know, you don't even need to reach the top for the, re the reward to show itself. First of all, I'm getting trained, but also the view. It's just absolutely, completely insane. I'm so honoured to be here and humbled and I'll never take it for granted. I've just stopped for literally five minutes. I'm on a timer and I've broken out a legendary candle mint cake. This stuff is just pure mint, sugar, and that's it. <laughs> and it's fueled expeditions all around the world and I absolutely love it. But of course, I only have it whenever I actually need it and today it seems like a very appropriate time to break out the candle mint cake. So I'm enjoying this moment, enjoying the views, and in probably like three minutes time, we'll be on the go again. <coughs> now just up ahead at some point, I think it's due to get a little bit complicated in the sense that there's various paths and climbers have different paths to get to crags and I don't, just don't want us to stop it a crag I want to get to the top so I'm going to try and stay vigilant with my navigation and keep moving onwards. Oh I feel like I probably shouldn't have stopped though. My legs have gone. What are you doing? 
Apparently my legs talk like that. Hmm. <laughs> ah, here we go. So there's one path up there. Here's another one this way. Let's get the map out. Here we go. Scurville Pike, beautifully circled. So I don't want to carry on up the gill. I want to go this way, crossing over. And then what we do is we'll curve around this crag here and then make our way to the summit of Scarfell, which is behind this crag. And we got Scafell over there, dominating the landscape the whole way up. Really quite excited now. I feel like we've made some really good progress. The time is not even half past 11 yet, and I left the car at about quarter to nine. So feeling fresh other than my legs, but they warm up nice and quickly. And we're just gonna keep pressing on. And I'm just absolutely, completely in love with this landscape. All right, we're rounding the corner. We've got Piers Gill here. This is a really great reference point and also a good catching feature for me to make sure I'm on the right line. And uh, you can see the kind of very gentle falls there that could have been something, but because it's so dry, again, it's just a trickle really. But this is it now. We're working up to our final ascent, which is gonna take us up to the top of Scarfell Pike, the highest point in England. Cannot express how stoked I am. Gonna try and contain it, save it for the top. Let's get this done. How amazing is it the water can sculpt the landscape so much? This almost canyon like feature in the landscape has obviously been carved away by millions and millions of years of forceful water coming down from the mountain, working their way down to, to the base of the valley. It's pretty incredible. Just spotted a few people up ahead. Obviously, this is a kind of conjunction point where lots of different paths from all the different valleys come up and then everyone can head up and scale Scarfell Pike. You can see people dotted all the way up now. Suddenly it's gone from remote to, well, not remote. <laughs> The path has suddenly changed from slabs to this kind of scree, which is a lot slower going. And you've got to kind of navigate around the boulders. I mean, look at it. Who said that's a path? <laughs> but it's all right, because again, preventing erosion and uh, helping protect the mountain from heavy footfall. Oh, flip. That view. Whew. I can't stop wowing at the scenery behind me. That's literally the most impressive thing I've seen this year. Oh, it's like, if it's like this here, what on earth is it going to be like at the top? The trail climbed up and up, and I made sure to pace myself and take the time to look back over the zigzagging path that goes up Scafell, the sister peak to Scarfell Pike. Literally on the final ascent now to the summit of Scarfell Pike and I've just been thinking about how truly humbled I am to be able to be here today in this glorious weather in a mountain that to so many is intimidating but here I am with views to the summit that have just appeared feeling literally on top of the world never mind England and it's just amazing how so many people are afraid to do things like this. They have a genuine belief that they can't, but as soon as you speak that, self, that over yourself, you can't, you're not wrong. Those who say they can, and those who say they can't are both usually right. So if this is what you want to do, you've got to train for it physically, mentally, and in terms of equipment, gain the skills, gain the knowledge to move safely in the mountains, and then come here and try it. Try lower peaks first if you really want to build your confidence 
So then do it. Check the weather forecast. If it's a day like today, you really can't go wrong if you're prepared and you're willing to give it a shot. And I really want to encourage you to do that. Don't speak can'ts over yourself. Speak cans. You can come here and you can stand on this point that I'm about to move on to. Let me show you what's going on. Boom. 978 meters above sea level. Scarfell Pike, highest point in England. Happy days. The atmosphere at the top was absolutely buzzing and I was amazed by the number of people there. It felt good to be surrounded by individuals who equally treasure the views and surrounding land, people that push themselves physically to reach the top. The 360 degree views were simply breathtaking and I couldn't find the words to summarize the elation and deep sense of freedom I was experiencing. I could only stand and stare, unable to stop smiling. All right, say goodbye to Scarfell. We're gonna head on to Broadcrag and Great End. We've got this bit of cloud coming in, but it's nothing too much. It actually adds a bit of atmosphere and it really does make you feel high in the sky. <laughs> This rock underfoot is really quite treacherous. You've got to definitely watch where you put your feet. This has such potential to twist or break an ankle. And if you fall on it, it's pretty hard and jagged. So just got to really take your time ascending and descending as we are now. And there aren't really any kind of clear paths. I mean, there are because the, the shale kind of looks more upturned and you can see it kind of takes on this paler color but it's just jagged rocks the whole way. Gosh, I'm actually really glad I came up the side that I did. This is bad enough going down, but coming up this, it's proper steep and proper shaley. people coming down are trying not to cause rock falls for the people coming up. It's very easy to unsettle the rocks here and they just tumble downwards towards the people who are climbing so a real amount of caution has to be taken navigating the stuff. Oh there's the bottom steady don't let it go. <laughs> oh, there we go we made it. Let's climb back up. So you see what I mean about broad crag? It's up there, literally a pile of boulders as though someone's gone pew, and they've all accumulated in that area. I think uh, I'm just going to continue skirting around on the path, which I'm not even sure I'm on now, aside from this cairn, but how accurate are they? <laughs> Looking back over the route up to Scarfell, you know, I'm so glad I haven't come this way and then spaced with that scree slope all the way up to the top. Ow. Steady. At least it's like granite stuff, so it's quite grippy. If this was slippy stone, it would be a nightmare. And now uh, the cairn to line the way. One over there. One behind it. This is all right. <laughs> right, that's Broad Crag, officially almost free of the boulder hell. <laughs> There's some more just to come, but then we're nearly there on this clear path, which is really interesting actually, that that's a line of red. Maybe the rocks and the geology change because it was all pale back there. Anyway, then it's on to Great End, and then from there we'll start the grand descent down to the next tarn. And I'm kind of not looking forward to that actually, feeling it in my legs just slightly with the downhill. So it's going to take quite a while, I think. But you know what? I've got all day. It's 13 minutes past one in the afternoon. So not quite all day, but certainly half a day. 
which is grand. <laughs> I'm just loving walking into this view. We've got a great end over there. There's a few people stood on top. I don't really have any intention of climbing back up to great end. I'm just gonna continue along the path that goes down, but we've got great gable here, just domineering the landscape to my left. It's just a massive rocking scree. I love that mountain though. It's so impressive. In fact, every single peak here, I love the fact that it's named and it's got a character and the people that live here understand how these mountains work and the respect that they need in order to function around them. And we've got Bowfell over there. Oh, this view! You can definitely tell it's one of the highest points. All right, we've officially begun descending. That's the way up to Great End. So we'll wave hello. Hello, Great End. <laughs> We're going to go down here to this junction of paths and then we're going to keep curving round until we walk parallel with the tarn that we are going to pass. The wind's picking up, which is quite refreshing. This giant rock face in front of us is Esk Pike and then over here is the Allen Crags. And you can see our path now, we're going to dip down through this valley. You can see Derwent water in the distance there. And we're just going to start to drop down now. A nice healthy descent. First views over Sprinkling Tarn, just tucked around there. That one looks quite cool actually, it's got like an island in the middle. approaching a junction here. If I went straight on, that would take me back to the path that I took earlier. What I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna branch off right. So I'm gonna stay to the right of Sprinkling Tarn, cross this little beck, and then just keep on descending. It's quite tough going, this stuff. That bit of water there is overflow from the tarn, which is right up there. And it's we're coming down, joining this main gully where it's heading all the way down, down the valley. And actually we can see Seathwaite now in the distance near those trees and the main bridleway path, which we're gonna join that we followed earlier. I've just stopped for a little bit because I'm thinking and we all know that thinking and walking for me usually is quite a disastrous combination. There's the water here to my right which I'm just listening to and just also enjoying this vast landscape because I'm so nearly back at the car it's just a few hundred meters left and um, you know I was <laughs> I was thinking about that summit moment how I didn't subject you to kind of some inspirational speech about the metaphors of life and how you've got to keep climbing your own personal mountains don't give up help each other as we climb our peaks and then when we get to the top there's usually some downhill you just got to embrace it all but no you got none of that it's just kind of me gawping at the landscape but you know <laughs> I have no shame in that I could not take in the vastness of what I was seeing how 3d and immense it was and um, it was just <laughs> it was quite an emotional mo moment actually and I did make a, a video call and a call when I was on the top and it was so nice to be able to share that moment with with a few people because you know I do most of this journeying on my own and usually that's absolutely fine but it is such a pleasure to be able to share the highlights and come out here and be like look guys look where I am not because I want to be all boastful but because I want to bring them along with me I carry them in here and then it's great when I can make a video call and show them as well so that was awesome but it also got me thinking about why I make these videos themselves and you know it is to motivate you guys to be like look at this amazing amazing world now get your boots on and get outside spend more time in the wild 
whether it's for physical health because you know you're training yourself being out here or whether it's mental health having to focus on absolutely every single step to make sure you're not going to trip or twist an ankle knowing where you are on the map listening to the water listening to the sheep the wind it's just being completely at one with this landscape as you journey through it you're forced to do that and it's a great thing so you know i just want to say thank you so much for following my journey today it's such an honor and a blessing to be able to show you this amazing landscape to come out here and I'll never ever take it for granted that I physically and mentally can and the fact that I can share this journey as well so as I say thank you for following enjoy your adventures guys and until the next time stay wild <laughs>